So we've talked about the top covered call ETFs for 2023, and then we made a pretty strong case for Devo being the best high yield dividend ETF. But what about JEPI, the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF? After all, it did win the gold medal award in our covered call ETFs video. Here is everything, everything you need to know about the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, JEPI. And as an extra bonus to you guys, if you stick around to the end, we're gonna also take a look and see how JEPI compares to Devo on two separate timeframes. Going back in time to even before JEPI was launched in May of 2020. <laughs> how are we gonna do that? Stick around. <laughs> All right, let's start with the basics. The JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, also known as ticker symbol JEPI or JEPI. This one was launched way back in May of 2020 in the midst of the COVID recovery. It's got an expense ratio of 0.35% on an annual basis, meaning your annual fee would be about $35 for every $10,000 you invest in JEPI. As it states on their website, the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF seeks to deliver monthly distributable income and equity market exposure with less volatility. They describe their own portfolio as a defensive equity portfolio employing a time-tested, bottom-up, fundamental research process with stock selection based on our proprietary risk-adjusted stock rankings. Here's another example where they say proprietary and you should be thinking actively managed. And in this case, they're not really giving you any type of indication as to how they select their stocks. When we looked at Devo, we understood that they had a, an active management approach, but they did give you a pretty straightforward guidance on, hey, we're starting with dividend growers, we're looking at you know market capitalization, we're looking at their dividend history, their earnings, etc. But you knew they were starting with dividend growers and building from there. With Jeppy, you don't even get that much. And then above and beyond their stock selection, secondly here, they have a disciplined options overlay, which implements written out of the money, S&P 500 index call options to generate distributable monthly income. So as opposed to Devo where they wrote call options strategically on specific dividend stocks in the portfolio, here they're saying, no, no, we're not writing individual options or covered calls on individual holdings in the portfolio. We're going to write them on the S&P 500 index. And as we're going to get to shortly, they're not very clear on how they do that either. Now, as we look here at their holdings, we're going to see a lot more in underlying investments in this ETF compared to Devo. Remember, Devo had 25 to 30 investments at any given time. With Jeppy, we see 128 holdings as of January 20th. And here's a quick look at their top 10, though we are going to deep dive this shortly. Top 10 is ExxonMobil, The Progressive Corporation, AbV, MasterCard, Bristol Myers Squibb, Comcast, Coca-Cola, Visa, Travelers, and United Health Group. All right, we're taking a brief look at the prospectus here for Jeppy, and the reason why is I want to center in on how they utilize their option strategy because it's completely different than how other investments work. We're looking here at the fund's main investment strategies. It indicates here that the fund seeks to achieve the objective by creating an actively managed portfolio of equity securities comprised significantly of those included in the S&P 500 and number two, through equity linked notes, ELNs, which are selling call options with exposure to the S&P 500. Here's where they get more specific. In order to generate income, the fund may invest up to 20% of its net assets in ELNs, which are structured as notes that are issued by counterparties, including banks, broker dealers, or their affiliates, and then are designed to offer a return linked to the underlying instruments within the ELN, which are primarily derivative instruments that are specially designed to combine the economic characteristics of the S&P 500 and written call options in a single note form. Now that might have seemed like a little bit of gibberish to you, and it did to me the first time as well. Essentially, what you really need to take away is instead of directly owning cover or directly selling covered call options on the underlying investments or even directly selling options on the S&P 500 index. Instead, Jeppy keeps it very proprietary. They have these specifically designed investments that they then buy and those underlying investments are packaged together which are actively selling index options on the S&P 500 index. In other words, they don't give you any indication on how they structure that, how much income they're generating, how much they're actually leveling off the profits in their um, portfolio because of the the way that they write those options, it's all completely 
proprietary and kept out of view. All right, back to the underlying portfolio here. We can come down here and we can select, hey, I wanna download all the holdings so we can see what it actually looks like. And when you open the actual Jeppy list of holdings, this is the, break, the breakdown of the investments that you get. And looking at this, there is definitely information overload, not really sure what we're looking at here. And that's definitely not good enough for me, which means it's not good enough for you either. So I went ahead and made some adjustments and made a little bit easier to look at this information. Here's what we got now. This is the exact same data, but I went ahead and reformatted it and added some additional information based on my own dividend stock spreadsheet to understand what types of dividend stocks are being owned. So this right now is sorted based on percentage of net assets. So these are the biggest investments up here at the top. And you'll notice that we do have quite a bit of diversification here. Exxon Mobil makes, is, the, is the largest weighting in the portfolio, only makes up 1.57%. And you'll notice here along the way, we've got equity length notes built in here and I highlighted those separately. They're coded as SPX underscore 27, 28, uh, 17, 25, all the way down here based on their weighting in the portfolio. Additionally, you'll notice that there are dividend stocks, but there are also, wait for it, non-dividend stocks in this portfolio. In fact, they make up nearly 10% of the portfolio, non-dividend paying stocks. In fact, let me just show you which ones are owned here. And this is weighted based on percentage of net assets. We've got Google, Berkshire Hathaway, Regeneron, Vertex, O'Reilly. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ow! Sorry, but you know you all did it in your head as well. AutoZone, um, Amazon, T-Mobile, uh, Keysight up here, Charter Communications, Fleet Corps, Boston Scientific, Adobe, Centene Corporation, Chipotle, Electronic Arts, Cadence Design, and Synopsis. Now, I have no problem with owning non-dividend paying stocks, it is just a little bit interesting to me that this is a fund that focuses on income, yet they also are looking to balance their capital appreciation and potentially the growth in the portfolio with some of these non-dividend paying stocks. Though you could even make the argument that in 2022, this actually hindered the portfolio. So the portfolio is made up of 9% non-dividend paying stocks, 3% in REITs, 15% in equity linked notes, those SPX notes, which create the covered call income, 3% in cash and cash equivalents, and dividend stocks make up 70% of the portfolio. Now you'll also notice here, if we were to sort based on dividend stocks, okay, we'll get rid of all the other noise, looking at just dividend stocks, and you'll notice here that while some of these investments are actively in my own monthly dividend stock spreadsheet, which means that they have a history of paying and raising their dividend for at least five consecutive years. However, some of them are not. We have a total of, in dividend stocks, we have 87 dividend stocks in the portfolio. But of those 87, not all of them have a history of paying dividends. Most of them do. We've got some kings here like Procter & Gamble, Dover Corporation, Lowe's Companies, which is an aristocrat, Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, Colgate Palmolive, PBG Industries, and Kimberly Clark. And then we've also got PepsiCo here. So we've got Dividend Kings, Dividend Aristocrats, Dividend Contenders, and some Dividend Challengers, but there are some holdings in here that do not have a history of raising their dividend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different dividend stocks in the portfolio that have been raising the dividends for less than five consecutive years, and a few of them then that do not have a history or consistently raise their dividend at all, including one of the largest just weightings in the portfolio, the Progressive Corporation. And again, one last thing to note here, we've got these equity linked notes, which again, make up 15% of the portfolio. We don't know what's inside them. We don't know exactly how it's structured. We just know that this is the type of product investment that they utilize to get their covered call income. All right, so we're looking at a different tab here in this spreadsheet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at both Jeppy and we're gonna look at Devo from May 21st, 2020, all the way through January 20th of 2023. We're gonna look at two different strategies here, both reinvesting dividends and living on the dividend. And when we live on the dividends, we're not actually reinvesting them. We'll look at both dividend income and portfolio balance, as well as the total return. For this comparison, we're assuming a lump sum investment of $100,000 on the initial date and no additional money added to the portfolio. Now, again, I don't expect you, the average Joe investor out there, to have $100,000 to drop into one of these investments though that potentially could be your situation. I'm just merely trying to show an apples to apples comparison of the two investments to see how they perform against each other. All right, so looking at these results here, first off, if we look at reinvesting the dividends, okay? So every dividend received during the time frame, we are reinvesting that money back into more shares of the underlying investment. From a dividend income perspective, Jeppy by far is the better investment. They generated in this time frame $29,601.90, compared to Devo only generating $17,800. $827.74. Now looking at the portfolio balance, which includes those reinvested dividends, Jeppy has $138,887 compared to the initial $100,000 
whereas Devo is higher at $146,000. So looking at just this information, we can see, well, clearly it depends on what you're trying to prioritize. If you're looking more for dividend income, well, then you really want to prioritize JEPI based on these historical results. However, if you're looking more for capital preservation and increasing that overall value, as well as some dividend income, then Devo would appear to be the best bet. Now, if we're living on the dividends, meaning we're not reinvesting them, how does that change the dividend income we're receiving during the time frame and the overall portfolio balance? Again, assuming we start with $100,000. From a dividend income perspective, JEPI still wins at $26,000 in dividend income for the period compared to only 16,600 for Devo. But if we look at that portfolio balance, again, starting with $100,000, we'll notice that JEPI only went up from 100 to 110 during these about three years, whereas Devo went up from 100 to 100, just under $128,000. Here's a look at that portfolio balance over time for JEPI and for Devo. You'll notice there's one key time frame we really need to be aware of. We've got JEPI in blue and Devo in orange. They're pretty much near each other. There's a big drop here in October of 2020, and then there's a big bounce, but the bounce is much bigger for Devo compared to Jeppy right in this area. And I've got to wonder if this is the reality of having a covered call strategy that's just a little bit too aggressive, because I'm guessing that this was, was capped off right here, either because of the underlying investments or potentially it could be because of those SPX underlying equity linked notes that may have capped the overall balance balance that was able to be achieved during that time frame. And you notice that from that point forward, the gap is pretty consistent along the way. Diva wins on portfolio balance. And again, this is with dividends not reinvested. We'll add in Jeppy and Devo reinvestments. We can see that the, the results are still about the same. We've got dark blue and dark orange for Jeppy and Devo respectively. And from there, we see the results are a little bit closer because remember, Jeppy generates more income. So the results are a lot closer here. But at the end of the day, the portfolio balance is still higher for Devo when compared to Jeppy. But the truth is, this is a very short time frame, right? We're just talking about from May of 2020 just through January of 2023, and it skips, it skips one of the most important time frames we could possibly want to understand, which is the COVID drop. Jeppy was launched in May of 2020, and we really experienced that massive drawdown from March to April of 2020. So the great news is, guys, we, we can actually go back before Jeppy was even launched, which was May of 2020, because JP Morgan, prior to launching their Jeppy ETF, they launched mutual funds that operate the exact same strategy. The one we're gonna look at is JEPIX, which is the JP Morgan Premium Income Fund or Mutual Fund instead of ETF. For this, we have data all the way back to January, the beginning of January, 2019. So now we have 2019, 2020, 21, 22, and a little bit of 2023. So essentially four years instead of two and a half years to see how these funds compare. If we're looking at just living on the dividends, okay? We're not reinvesting them, we are living on them, which means our portfolio balance is at the mercy of the market. We're gonna see if it goes above or below $100,000. For JEPI, we see that total dividend income during this four year period, give or take, was about $42,100 while well, it was only 28,000 for Devo. But from a portfolio balance perspective, there is a significant difference. We started with $100,000 with Jeppy. After four years, it's only worth 101. And to be clear, we experienced COVID and we had a drawdown in 2022 that we experienced and Jeppy is still positive during the time frame. So we shouldn't necessarily be frustrated with seeing $101,000 here. It's still net positive and we generated a lot of income during this time frame. So we'll notice here though that while Jeppy only was worth $101,000, Devo was worth a lot more at that portfolio increased despite no money being added from 100 to $132,860 during those four years. And they generated $28,000. Now that's less than the 42, but their portfolio went up quite a bit. In this scenario, total return for Jeppy was $43,000 when you factor in the dividends and the portfolio increase and $60,000 for Devo. When we look at reinvesting the dividends, we'll notice here that the dividend income is even higher for Jeppy at 51,511 compared to 31,699 for Devo, but the portfolio bounces a little bit closer since we're reinvesting those dividends and increasing the portfolio. We've got $150,000 for Jeppy and only 167, and it's still a big difference here, but less than if you're just living on the dividends here. 167, 629 for Devo. And here's how that portfolio balance looks over time here. First, we're looking at not reinvesting the dividends, and we'll notice that the portfolio is very similar all the way down through the COVID crash. But from there, 
we immediately get a big bounce with Devo compared to Jeppy. And the way that Jeppy levels off right in this area right here just tells you it has to be due to the covered calls. There's no way it falls this far in line and bounces up in line, but then is caught right here. This has to be due to the covered call strategy. And this is the inherent risk with writing covered calls, right? If you write them too close to the money, you get a lot of cash, but it caps your upside in your overall investment balance. And what looks like happened here is Devo had a, a little bit more conservative strategy for the covered calls and allowed their portfolio to rise even more than Jeppy. Jeppy generated more cash, but as a result of that extra cash, their, their portfolio bounce leveled off at a certain amount when it hit those strike prices. If we look at the portfolio bounce with dividends we invested, we got the dark blue for Jeppy and the dark orange for Devo. We see the same big drop in 2020 for COVID. And then just like we saw in the other case, we've got a larger increase in the portfolio balance for Devo right out of that crash. And despite dividends being reinvested at a higher level for Jeppy, it never actually catches Devo. At the end of the day, you can see fundamentally that Devo does a good job of balancing cash flow and capital appreciation, but they emphasize more the capital appreciation. Whereas Jeppy does a good job of preserving their capital value, but their focus is much more on generating more cash flow. And you can see this from the dividend yield. I believe it's like four to five or five to six percent for Devo, whereas we're at 10, 11, 12% right now with Jeppy. Ultimately, what it comes down to is what type of investor are you? Are you needing more cash flow or more capital growth? Maybe you want a perfect balance here. Ultimately, I think the best value you can get from this is maybe owning a portion of Jeppy and Devo and then fluctuating the percentage of ownership depending on your most important goals. And that's what we're gonna approach in the next video. We're gonna look at Jeppy, we're gonna look at Devo, we're gonna look at other potential assets that we can add to a dividend portfolio to see what's the best way to dial up certain percentages based on capital appreciation or preservation, uh, dividend income, and dividend growth because that's also a vital factor to consider. If you want to make sure and catch those follow-up videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. I respond to all comments left on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.